Coming up here on the San Francisco 49ers Report, my top draft prospects in the 2024 NFL Draft for San Francisco. These are the best players and my favorite players that the Niners can realistically get. And keep that in mind here, that this is a realistic list of players that the Niners can select. And some of these players, of course, would require a trade-up. And I definitely want to educate you on some of the top players at these positions. But this is why you're not going to see a Malik Neighbors or a Marvin Harrison Jr. Some of those upper echelon players in addition to quarterbacks because the Niners set with quarterback with Brock Purdy. Let's begin with the big pressing need on this football team, and that's along the offensive line. First, with some top offensive tackle prospects. Now, contradicting statement here, I don't think the Niners are going to be able to trade up for Joe Alt or Olu Fashanu. Joe Alt out of Notre Dame, just a terrific generational, multi-time Pro Bowl level talent coming out of Notre Dame. With his size, he moves so well, a lot of the same qualities for Fashanu, who, if he came out in the 2023 draft, probably would have been a top 10 pick. And this year, depending on how many quarterbacks go early, both Alt and Fashanu could be top 10 selections, if not right on that cusp and right in that range. J.C. Latham, Talies Fuaga, and Troy Fatanu, other really good offensive tackles in this deep offensive tackle class that probably are not going to be there for San Francisco. Again, you'd have to probably trade up. Fuaga is one of my favorite players on this list. And if he falls to like 15-16, could San Francisco trade 31 and their second round selection at 63 to try to move up and get him? Just a really good athlete, so nasty for his size. Overall pro football focus grade this past year of 88.2 out of Oregon State. Pass blocking grade of 80. Run blocking grade of 90.9. He'd be a scheme fit for San Francisco because he's played in the zone scheme before. Can climb to that second and third level on some of those pool blocks. Shanahan obviously would ask him to do a lot of that. He could play tackle in the future guard right now or tackle right now and take over for Colton McKivitz. Zero sacks surrendered last year, two hits and 10 hurries. So Oltz and Fashanu, to reemphasize this, they could go inside the top 10 on the cusp of being in the top 10. Latham, Fuaga, Fatanu, they would require a trade-up. These players, though, could be in the Niners' range or a trade-up that wouldn't cost as much. Kingsley Suamata Ia at a BYU, another good scheme fit. He's a very experienced player as compared to Amarius Mims and Tyler Guyton, who have not played a lot at the college level, but Mims, Guyton, freak athletes, wonderful size, really everything that you want in an offensive tackle build, the only thing, you have a Super Bowl-ready team right now, and I'm not sure if those players can be plug-and-play guys from the jump. Patrick Paul out of Houston is a good mover, and then Blake Fisher out of Notre Dame, highly recruited player when he went to South Bend. I'm more so projecting to be a second or third rounder. Maybe that could be a pick for the Niners a little bit later. A player to watch here in the second or third round. And a player, if he went in the first round, it would not surprise me at all just because he's 6'5", 326, is also a really good athlete, is Karan Amagaji. And he started playing football in high school. He's an extremely late bloomer, went to Yale, have to be very smart to have those Ivy League smarts. And maybe not right away, but at some point in the future, he could be a really special player in this league. Just like this is a deep offensive tackle class, this is also a very good interior offensive lineman class, both at the center spot and at the guard position. I think Jackson Powers Johnson is the best center in this draft class out of Oregon. Really like Graham Barton as well. Went to Duke, played center, played left tackle, shorter arms, so could be a guard at the next level. Jordan Morgan has been mocked to the Niners a ton. Played offensive tackle at Arizona. He, too, has shorter arms in the ninth percentile there. And sometimes I think we make a little bit too much of the shorter arms. But if he plays guard, that fulfills a big need for the Niners. Also a guy who played very, very well against players like Braylon Trice in the Pac-12. Cooper Beebe, offensive guard out of Kansas State. A player who moves and is very quick for being over 300 pounds. And then Zach Frazier, another really good center in this class. I don't think Jake Brendel is a long-term fit and the long-term option 
at center for the Niners. And $5 million per year is a little bit expensive for him. If Jackson Powers Johnson falls to the Niners at 31, are they going to be able to help themselves when they realize that JPJ could be an impact guy for the next decade? His pro football focus number is awesome this past year. Overall grade 84.3, pass blocking 90.6, run blocking 85.2, no sacks, no hits, one hurry given up in 2023. And the Snyder's offensive line right now, you have Trent Williams, Aaron Banks. They're good. And I'm fine with the left side. I'm not okay with center because I think Jake Brendel's a little bit light. And against physical defensive tackles like Chris Jones, sometimes he can get pushed around a little bit. You bring back John Feliciano, fourth ranked guard in run block win rate last year, 25th in pass block win rate. You're not paying him a lot of money. He was certainly serviceable. The Niners missed him. In the Super Bowl, once he went down and Spencer Burford took over for him, and he could certainly get by for another year, but what he put out on Instagram last ride looks as though this could be his 10th and final season. You need to find long-term stability along the offensive line, and you know my feelings on Colton McKivitz. I thought it was wild how Kyle Shanahan from the NFL owners meeting said he has done a hell of a job at right tackle for us. We have a lot of confidence in him going into this year. He's one of the real leaders on our team. I thought he did a hell of a job playing this year. Is that the standard? A player who gave up 47 total pressures and nine sacks this year, 12 more pressures in the playoffs. He was the 47th highest graded tackle in the NFL. Please address offensive line in the NFL draft. Otherwise, I'm going to go gray. I might go bald and I'm going to lose it. And the Niners might lose another big time game because I think the lack of offensive line play in the trenches and them being weak there has led to them getting ousted in the playoffs the last couple of years. If you want the Niners to draft an offensive lineman, who's with me? I just lost it almost right there. I want you to hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. Let's join together. We heard Jim Harbaugh this week talking about the offensive line, how the entire team depends on the offensive line. I hope Kyle Shanahan sees that clip. Another area of need for the Niners here, cornerback spot. And this draft class is top heavy at cornerback for outside guys. It is very deep, and you can get some really good slot nickel corners in the second, third, fourth, and fifth rounds. These are my top five corners in this draft class here. Quinian Mitchell out of Toledo. Kool-Aid McKinstry is my second favorite corner in this class. I also really like his teammate, Terion Arnold. I love the swagger in which Kool-Aid and Arnold play with. Nate Wiggins ran a 4-3, 40-yard dash. He's a little bit lighter, but is really good in coverage. And then Cooper DeGene, a rare member of the white cornerback club, is an exceptional athlete. We'll see if he plays safety or corner at the next level. But his measurables and his testing even though he didn't officially test in the pre-draft process. I'm more so talking about the measurables here and how he's tested in the past with how quick, athletic, springy he is. I think that he's going to have a long career in the NFL just because that all translates to the next level. Quinian Mitchell, favorite corner in this draft class for a couple of different reasons. He's a ball hawk. He had 17 pass breakups this past year, set the school record for pass breakups, and he could have went back for another year. He had one interception and three drops, so actually officially catching the football on those interception opportunities, little bit of an issue, but I have a lot of confidence in the player. Zone coverage, man coverage, you can play them both. 88.7 on the man grade, 85.9 on the zone grade, a lot of passer rating, a 51.1 completion rate, 43.5, a coverage grade, 91.6 pro football focus overall grade, 91 and a half. Insert the eggplant emoji with the little water sprinkle there. BPA strategy. BPA stands for best player available. The Niners could go this route if one of those corners falls to 31. For instance, Kool-Aid McKinstry. Niners had a formal meeting with him at the NFL Combine. Coming off a of Jones fracture surgery. He still ran like a 4-4 sub 4-4 at his pro day before getting surgery. So, a lot of people think he's going to be able to come back for training camp. He's my second favorite corner in this class. If you get him at 31, I wouldn't hate the pick. And this Niners secondary, in particular the cornerback position, some question marks here. Charvarius Ward, Diamador, Lenore, I love them both at outside corner and in the slot. Lenore can play the outside. Ambry Thomas, 
A little bit of a question mark. Up next, my top wide receivers. Again, this doesn't include Malik Neighbors, Marvin Harrison Jr., because they're not going to be around. Nor is Roma Dunze, who I think is a terrific player coming out of Washington. Adane Mitchell, outside of that big three, is my favorite wide out in this class. Excellent size at 6'4", great speed. I think he's going to be a number one in this league, and whichever team drafts him, they're getting a steal. Brian Thomas, really fast for his size as well. Xavier Worthy set the record for the fastest 40-yard dash in the history of the combine at 421, but he's under 170 pounds. Troy Franklin, Malachi Corley, they're bigger, and they've run fast. And that's the theme of this wide receiver class here. A lot of guys who have good bulk, good size, but they're very fleet of foot. My next grouping of favorite outside X wide receivers, Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina, terrific accent, by the way. Keon Coleman out of Florida State, jump ball wide receiver. If you want somebody on the outside who can go up and get it, Jalen Polk, burner. Devontae Walker, burner. And Jalen McMillan, I like his speed too. Now, this isn't to say that I'm concerned about the Niners wide receiver depth chart, but is this the last year that we're going to see Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel play together? You also want to maybe sign Jawan Jennings to a contract extension. So do you plan ahead here because you can't pass up on a really good wide receiver who can be a part of this offense as the third or fourth guy and you start to plan ahead a little bit with the freak player? Keep that in mind. This wide receiver class, loaded and deep. If you want some slot wide receivers, Roman Wilson, Lad McConkey, Ricky Pearsall, Wilson out of Michigan, McConkey out of Georgia, Pearsall out of Florida. Those are very solid slot options, but I think the Niners might be set there because Jawan Jennings is there, and then Debo operates out of the slot a little bit. So, too, does Christian McCaffrey. Make sure you subscribe to the program for a year-round and daily coverage of the San Francisco 49ers. We are 232 people away from 132,000 subscribers. How quickly can we get there? It's up to you. Hit that sub button. Today's show is sponsored by Game Time. If you're looking at, for the best seats at the lowest price guaranteed, Game Time is the solution, and it's the only solution. Why, Chase? Because it's the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total up front, so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. Buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. This app, easy to use, and it's quick to use. The other ticketing apps, sometimes they take forever to just get some tickets. I don't have time for that noise. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, even an hour after it starts. And you can get tickets to football games, basketball games, baseball games, but also outside of that, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. There are zone deals for big time savings. The game time guarantee means that you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Download the game time app, create an account, use the code chat sports, $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create that account, redeem that code chat sports, lowest price guaranteed. Let's talk some defensive players here and we still have some more offensive players to get to, tight ends and running backs, top edge rushers that the Niners would be able to select here. Layatu Latu out of UCLA, really good athlete, a little bit concerned about the neck. Chop Robinson, an insanely quick first step, just a freak athlete who ran just so well for being 250 pounds. Darius Robinson out of Mizzou has some good bend. Marshawn Nealon, a good player out of Western Michigan, smaller school guy. And then Adisa Isaac out of Penn State has been overshadowed a little bit by Chop Robinson. Another player I like, but he tested very poorly, was slow but very productive this past year for Washington. And maybe his game speed's a little bit faster, but some people thought maybe a first-round pick, maybe a second-round pick. I think he's sliding down draft boards because he ran slow is Braylon Trice out of Washington. Top defensive tackles. I do think this is a big need for San Francisco, and the good news for them could be a good player at their choosing. Byron Murphy out of Texas. Tavondre Sweat out of Texas. Sweat slower, a lot heavier. More of a run-plugging, run-stuffing 
defensive tackle. Not sure he's a great scheme fit just because I think he's more so of a nose tackle type, old school type of big, beefy defensive tackle. Jerzon Newton hasn't been able to test in the pre-draft process, but put a lot of good stuff on film for Illinois. Michael Hall out of UNC, uh, out of Ohio State, excuse me, so don't mind that. Uh, Michael Hall out of Ohio State, very good player. I've talked about him with Larry Kruger before. And then Braden Fisk out of Florida State. His testing numbers were out of this world. Niners defensive line depth chart, still going to run with the 4-3 defense, I would imagine, under Nick Sorensen. Maybe they have some stand-up edge rushers a little bit more, though, with players like Leonard Floyd, your Tur Gross Matos in the fold. Malik Collins, he's half the price of Eric Armstead, but he's been more productive the last couple of years. Javon Hargrave had seven sacks in 2023, down from 11 the season before that. Hopefully he rebounds a little bit. I think defensive tackle could also be an option at number 31. You need to get some young talent there because right now you don't have that young talent. Malik Collins, 28. Javon Hargrave on the other side of 30 years old. You want that developmental defensive tackle, and Kalia Davis has been injured a lot. Top linebackers, Junior Colson out of Michigan, dog. Edgerin Cooper out of Texas A&M, just insane sideline to sideline speed. Peyton Wilson, a great athletic tester, but a bevy and a long list, a Santa list of injury issues going back to high school. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. out of Clemson, his pops was an all-pro in the league for the Philadelphia Eagles, and then Tommy Eichenberg out of Ohio State. Niners in an interesting spot here because you're not sure when... Dre Greenlaw is going to come back. They have some Dre Greenlaw insurance and Devondre Campbell from Green Bay, who was a first-team All-Pro in 2021 and said the last couple of years he's been misused. So he's anxious to show that he's still got it. Backup options include D. Winters, Jalen Graham, Ezekiel Turner, Demetrius Flanagan Fowles, but the last two players, more so special teams types. Not a massive need at the linebacker spot. Could be a best player available situation. Junior Colson's there. Pick number 63, he's there in the third round, and you're not sure what the future is of Dre Greenlaw because he's a little bit expensive. Maybe you go in that direction. Top tight ends, Brock Bowers. I think he's going to fall in the draft just because I think a lot of quarterbacks are going to go inside the top five, top ten, causing a lot of the wide receivers and offensive linemen to maybe slide down draft boards a little bit. And if he's available in the 20s, my goodness, could he be your future George Kittle replacement? Jatavion Sanders out of Texas. He's met with the Niners multiple times in the pre-draft process. They have shown some interest in him. Good athlete, didn't necessarily translate to quality testing numbers in Indianapolis, but a third round pick, maybe you decide to do that. Theo Johnson out of Penn State as the Nittany Lions continue to develop and groom some really good prospects. Cade Stover out of Ohio State. And a player who I really like is Jared Wiley. I think that he could be a really good pass catcher at the next level. You have to start planning for the post-George Kittle days. I love Kittle, love the personality, love the swagger. The production in 2023 was awesome. First 1,000-yard season since 2019, but this is a player who's getting older. He has had injury issues in the past, and he's very expensive. So you have to have that contingency plan, and I don't think that Braden Willis or Cam Latu are those contingency plans. In fact, I didn't really like how the Niners decided to draft two tight ends and no offensive linemen in the draft last year. Top running backs. Need a backup behind Christian McCaffrey because you can't count on Elijah Mitchell. I like Jordan Mason, but this coaching staff hasn't really trusted him. Jonathan Brooks out of Texas, good player, shifty. Blake Corum, just an all-around back, a little bit shorter. Not really a three-down guy, but I think that he's going to be a good player at the next level. Really adds to the culture. Braylon Al Allen out of Wisconsin. Bucky Irving out of Oregon. Trey Benson out of Florida State. Good players there. Isaac Garendo is a fascinating player out of Louisville. He is lightning quick. He ran a 4-3-3 40-yard dash at 221 pounds. So, for instance there... Xavier Worthy ran a 4-2-1 40-yard dash at 167 pounds, I think it was. So you have a player who's much heavier, much more physical, running almost a second slower than Xavier Worthy. He's a decisive back, home run hitter. He can pass protect a little bit. Does have injury issues with hamstring stuff. I'll also throw another name out there 
The USC running back is also really intriguing to me. Um, his name is escaping me right now. Marshawn Lloyd. Marshawn Lloyd is a player that I think could be a good player for the Niners too. Christian McCaffrey has two more years left on that contract. Give me a follow on X. Give me a follow on Instagram. I put up a lot of short-form content on there in addition to the long-form content that you just watched. Appreciate the support. Thanks for rocking with us. Have a fantastic day.